Joining me now is Antonio De Checa, the Chief Operating Officer at Tabrit. Antonio, thanks for taking the time and joining us. How is geothermal energy harnessed? And besides cooling, what other applications is it being used for nowadays? Yes, geothermal energy is uh, uh, renewable energy that has been harnessed uh, actually since decades uh, in many countries. And uh, this is uh, the first time here in the region that we are exploring uh, a project to use uh, uh, geothermal energy for cooling production. Uh, besides cooling, geothermal energy can be used in different ways. Uh, in Europe, for example, we see a lot of applications of uh, geothermal coupled with uh, heat pumps for uh, uh, satisfying the uh, heating needs of the buildings. So this can, uh, the, the, the heat coming from within the earth can be directly used to heat our buildings. Uh, moreover, uh, most of the application on large scale of geothermal energy uh, to produce steam, to drive turbines that uh, are meant to produce electricity. So the applications are very wide, but most importantly, this is a renewable resource that can be uh, used to decarbonize all these sectors. Tell us more about the two wells, Antonio, um, in Mazdar city. How deep are the two wells that have been dug? What is the water flow? And more importantly, how hot is it? Well, these wells actually were uh, realized, were constructed uh, uh, more than 10 years ago uh, and was a visionary project, as all Mazdar City actually was a visionary project. So we are not surprised to find these wells here. Uh, but what we did, we uh, the, the wells were uh, built in 2011. Uh, we have uh, uh, re-explored these wells uh, very recently with the help of ADNOC. Uh, and we have tested the capacity of these wells to produce enough uh, flow rate of hot water uh, to uh, enable the production of cooling through uh, absorption system. Um, the temperature that we are getting at the surface uh, is around 20, uh, 90 degrees Celsius uh, with a flow rate of 100 liters per second, which is enough to uh, uh, supply uh, the hot water needed by the absorption, absorption chiller uh, to produce the cooling that we need uh, for uh, our needs. And this uh, uh, amount of cooling will be directly injected in our district cooling system already present in Master City. Antonio, tell us a little bit more. I mean, you've touched upon how the water, the hot water is used in the cooling, um, but uh, tell us more about these absorption uh, processes. And uh, are there any, um, you know, um, operational challenges with this new um, uh, geothermal energy? And how is it different from your current traditional cooling process? Okay, we start from this last question. Uh, what, how we generate cooling in our district cooling system? Basically, we rely on uh, the energy mix that we have on our electricity grid to supply electricity on uh, centrifugal chillers that are uh, uh, thermal machines that are producing cooling through compression of a fluid. Uh, the same way our refrigerator works basically at home. Uh, now, what we are doing here, we are using another technology, which uh, is absorption, which doesn't need electricity to run, uh, in a way that we, the, this, these machines need thermal energy, heat, in an absorber, uh, that is a solid uh, absorbing this heat, and producing cooling as a result of this process. So we have to see uh, the uh, absorption chiller as a kind of boiler uh, that is uh, uh, using this heat to produce cooling on the other side. And the challenge with uh, uh, these machines uh, are relatively uh, lower than uh, operating normal, normal chiller because they don't require a lot of maintenance. They are uh, uh, environmental friendly and uh, uh, their efficiency uh, when we have at disposal 
this kind of renewable energy is quite uh, better than uh, the traditional uh, cooling uh, systems. How much emissions can be saved uh, using geothermal compared to your current business as usual? The efficiency-wise, performance-wise, these machines uh, are uh, better than conventional systems. And if we compare with uh, our current technologies used in district cooling, which is already 50%, up to 50% more efficient than conventional cooling system, adding up the uh, system that we are using in this project, we can achieve further 20 to 30% uh, higher efficiency uh, in the process, which means 20-30% further uh, emission savings in terms of CO2. As it stands now, what could be the cost be per refrigerated ton using these two wells currently compared to your current cost base? And how do you see that cost reducing in the future? As all uh, technologies, there is a, a learning curve. And for us, this is the first project in the region. So. Uh, there has been a, a, a lot of efforts that we put uh, into this project in terms of uh, uh, not only CAPEX, but also in terms of uh, other uh, resources that we need to employ uh, to achieve uh, the results that we are uh, uh, discussing now. Uh, I would say roughly to give you uh, an indication, mm. uh, this is a, a small scale project. We will produce around 10%, which is the base load of the district cooling in Mazdar City. Uh, and uh, uh, compared to uh, uh, our usual plant, this pr prototype of project will be more than double than a normal, a normal plant. But of course, this depends on the scale. We are talking about a project uh, of a small, a small scale to prove that this technology is, is uh, working and mm. uh, we can scale up later and scaling up this project to larger scale definitely the cost will be uh, the, the same even lower than uh, conventional cooling because uh, we have also uh, the possibility to uh, uh, use all the knowledge of Adno group in drilling which will draw the cost much lower than uh, what was done 10 years ago uh, to build the same uh, system. On the issue of scaling up, uh, finally, Antonio, when do you expect to see a wider uptake of geothermal energy in district cooling at Tabrid and more generally in the wider region? Well, this uh, uh, geothermal potential is uh, very important. And uh, we have the chance in the, in the region, uh, especially in Abu Dhabi and Alain, to have a very important geothermal and uh, potential uh, available. And uh, uh, our aim is to explore uh, the, the areas where our district cooling is already present near the uh, most important geothermal uh, energy reservoirs mm. uh, and see how we can uh, scale up uh, the system to uh, increase the size and also increase the, the energy mix of renewable energies, including geothermal, in, uh, in our system. Antonio de Checa, the Chief Operating Officer at Tabri, thank you very much for taking the time and joining us on the show. Thank you very much.